How's everybody doing? I, uh, getting right, man, I tell you what, I'm in Columbus, Ohio, and it has gone from being, it was literally in the 70s two days ago, and right now at the wind chill, it's like 15, and it, uh, it feels like about 15 below. <laughs> Gotta love Ohio winters, but hey, uh, my brother, was at uh, one of our favorite hobby stores yesterday. And uh, I think he he left the store <laughs> a little bit lighter in his bank account. And uh, while he was there, I I, uh, I had talked to the owner several months ago when, when a locomotive was uh, put into production. I missed the cutoff for pre-orders. So I asked him if he was gonna be getting any of those in and he said he was. Uh, I've been checking their website have not seen them but since my brother was there uh i decided wait hey just ask him and see if uh, if he's got those in stock or he said he was going to order one or two of them and uh sure enough he did so i'm gonna head up uh i actually just out of uh, coincidence uh i i travel a lot for for my job i'm in sales and got an appointment today up in the mansfield uh ohio area which Puts me only about an hour from uh, from Oberlin, where Stockyard Express is. So um, I'm gonna head over to my uh, appointment right now, and then um, hopefully I can get out of there at a decent enough hour. It shouldn't be an issue. Stockyard Express closes at five, so as long as I can be on the road by about 3:30, 3:45, I should be able to get there in time. They set everything aside for me, so let's head her north and uh, go get ourselves a little something new for the layout. All righty. All righty, guys. If, uh, not sure if you've ever been to Stockyard Express, if you're from the Northeast Ohio area, um, it is literally. You've arrived at your destination. A farm. Uh, but it's a great operation, Clyde and and his, uh, his team, a bunch of great people. Uh, usually you can smell Stockyard Express before you, before you see it, but it's so cold today and windy, I'm, I'm guessing we're gonna be just fine. But uh, hopefully, they're not expecting me. I, I was supposed to come up, um, I was supposed to come up in, uh, in about a week to get it. So let's head on inside and uh, knock this out. Well, we're here at Stockyard Express. Let's go in and see Clyde and the guys. Let's see what they have for me. Always love coming here. If you've never been here, such a great place. So, uh, got uh, got the the spoils of our visit in the back seat. Uh, coming away with a little bit more than <laughs> I initially came here to get, but that'll happen. So uh, headed back, uh, headed back up to, uh, headed back up to my brother's now. Going to try to beat uh, traffic through downtown Cleveland and uh, get everything on the layout. Alrighty, guys. See you in a second. Well, okay, everybody, back at the layout. Um, Boy, I love going to Stockyard Express. I tell you, Clyde's just such a great guy. Uh, it was just him and him and uh, his uh, one of his employees, Brian, was there uh, on the phone and, and uh, just got a chance to talk to Clyde. Such a good dude. Um, if you really have the opportunity, their inventory is really good right now. Um, have a lot of hard to find stuff. Have some new, really, really beautiful. And I, didn't, I should have taken a picture, but had some beautiful uh, MTH PS3 um, Fairbanks Morris Train Masters um, in in exclusive uh, paint schemes that that Clyde and uh, and Mr. Muffins ran together uh, have some also some other nice units up there that you really should get a look at. Do have some nice Atlas and Lionel product as well. Uh, I picked up a couple things while I was there. Um, I've got a couple couple projects that I'm taking two rail uh, six axle diesels to three rail and. Been on the lookout for a scale wheel set, so not crazy about spending $60 for a set of wheels, but 
Uh, those are getting to be harder and harder to find. And also have an area on the layout where I'm gonna put, uh, wanna put some barbed wire fencing up. So they had the Woodland Scenics. He's a Woodland Scenics dealer. Has a dealer has a really nice supply of Woodland Scenics stuff. And whenever I'm up there, I always usually end up buying a freight car or two. And man, they had this really nice, actually has a, a nice selection of these uh, premier 55 foot all door box cars. Um, kind of kind of thought maybe I'd buy one or two of them. I kind of used some some restraint uh, since I ended up buying that wheel set. I only I only bought one of them, but um, have not taken out of the box yet. And uh, like so many of these manufacturers, gosh, getting these things out of the boxes could be half the battle sometimes, it feels like, without damaging the styrofoam. Okay, Atlas, I was hoping that, there we go. You don't go down the road at Lionel and make it so that uh, getting them out of the box is always a risk. That, this is a really nice looking, this is a really nice looking car, guys. Um, you know, it's, it's the MTH tooling. So it's not like it's a brand new model and it hasn't been on the market before, but well, I'll tell you what, um, this car is really, really nice looking, really nice looking car, all door box car. So, you know, it's got doors all down the entire side of it. We have some wood products and wood industry on, on the, on the layout. So I thought that this one would, would work really well with what we do on the layout. What a what a nice looking car. It's great detail all around, grab irons down the side, the detail on the end, it's great. You got your typical MTH style couplers. Nice looking car. I'll probably weather this a little bit, um, nothing heavy. And we're really happy with that. That, uh, that is a nice looking, Nice looking piece right there. We'll get that on the layout here and run it. A couple other things that I've got. Um, if you recall, if you saw my video at Christmas time where I had some new freights on the layout, um, one thing I thought was kind of funny was I found four Weaver 40 foot box cars that I forgot I even had. Um, they were they were not in their original boxes. I got them in just like a shoe box, essentially, like a boot box. So I started working on weathering those. Um, have this uh, this Boston and Maine unit here. Um, pretty happy with the way that turned out. I did some some paint fade on it and some some areas where it's dusty and grimy and where rust is actually starting uh, to form on the roof and along the sill line. These aren't high dollar cars, but definitely. Definitely like the way that one turned out. And uh, got another one here of the four. Um, this is the Elgin, Joliet, and Eastern uh, Chicago Outer Belt. This one's just a little bit, a uh, little bit more roughed up. Um, similar, I, I did some paint fading on the top with some acrylics and use some airbrushing and some weathering powders uh, and some thinners to uh, to kind of get that weathered look. Um, didn't want to make it really, really, really rough, um, but definitely worn and used. So pretty happy with how that one turned out. And, and I think they look, they look pretty convincing sitting next to each other as a pair. Um, I do like the effect that that weathering puts on these cars. Uh, I do think that there, there's a place for some of the cars to look, kind of have that fresh out of the paint shop look, but most freight cars and revenue service are gonna be in pretty rough condition. But the whole reason I went back there, um, I had spoken to Clyde last year. So I, um, I talked to Clyde and the orders had already been pour, put in and he assured me that he, well, he was pretty sure he had ordered one of these. <clears throat> Actually ordered more than one, he thought. So my brother popped in there yesterday. And uh, I had been on Stockyard Express's website. But I hadn't seen any updates in terms of um, 
you know, what the, what the Atlas inventory had become. So, um, I had my brother ask Clyde if he had any of these and lo and behold, uh, he had it sitting right on his shelf. So obviously it's an Atlas Premier model. Um, not a big secret which ones are out. Um, so this guy, it's a, well, a recently fallen flag. So I thought while it's out there, you know, trying to trying to source a couple Montana rail link items just because Montana rail links essentially going by the wayside. So this is another recent casualty of the big class ones gobbling up the smaller stuff. Um, I just thought it was gorgeous. So this is the, uh, the Pan Am, Pan Am Railways SD40-2, Protosound 3, obviously it's MTH tooling. Um, and that's not a bad thing because this is a great model. It's a great model. Just really love this paint scheme. Um, thought it was a, a good looking piece. Clyde does have, this is a cab number 608. Clyde does have cab number 609 in stock for anybody that's interested. He sure did want me to buy them both. And uh, if I wasn't so new, new locomotive cost adverse, I probably would have bought both of them, but one is enough. Um, didn't start my week off expecting that I would buy something new. Uh, I have a, I have a few locomotives that are on order right now. And, uh, obviously at some point those are going to come in. You usually don't get a whole lot of a warning. I have one that should be showing up here in the very near future, uh, that I ordered through Uncle Ray's trains in Sheffield, Lake, Ohio. And I got another couple on order through Mr. Muffin's trains out in Atlanta, Indiana. Um, gosh, I, I ordered those back in, in June of last year. Uh, and there's still no, no timetable to get them. Boy, this thing is, this thing really looks nice. Really looks nice. I, you know, full review, probably not necessary. It's an MTH, essentially an MTH Proto Sound 3 SD40-2. Boy, this paint, this paint sure does look beautiful. Uh, everything about this, everything about this is everything I could have expected. Um, since I bought this guy, I thought I would, uh, I thought I would run it today with something that is, uh, you know, I so, sort of prototypically correct. Um, I've got a, a, a Dash 9, a CSX Dash 9. It's a Protosound 2 Dash 9, a 5 volt unit that uh, I put on the charger last night. She got a bunch of miles on her. She'll actually cross over a thousand miles today um, when we run it. So uh, why don't we get these on the layout, have a little fun. We'll run these, uh, these new cars and uh, get a look at this thing kind of going to work. I'm going to, I'm going to put some lubrication on all the gears and wheels real quick before I fire it up and then we'll get, we'll get her back on the layout. So I just have some Excel, um, heavy gear oil and for all you guys out there, less is more, uh, just a little, little bead of oil on the teeth. Don't worry about getting it on both sides. It'll work its way across to everything. Um, just a tiny, tiny, tiny little dab on the joint of the pickup rollers. And capillary action, it'll work its way in. Keep those nice and nice and quiet. All right, I'm gonna get this on the tracks and get her uh, into the controller.
Take care. See you soon. Well, there it is, guys. Boy, I'll tell you what. Um, I can't be more thrilled with this. This one is just a gorgeous locomotive. I've, I've seen, you know, I don't, Pan Am ran up in the New England area and was a conglomeration of, uh, oh gosh, I think Guilford Rail, which I think uh, Guilford Rail had bought out Boston and Maine. Um, uh, there was another relatively large one. The Boston and Maine was one of the big ones. I can't think of, darn it, I can't think of what the, uh, the other one up there in the northeast was but there was two primary railroads that formed the, the um that formed the uh, the guilford rail system and then pan am came in uh i think they bought the rights to the pan am name um, from pan american airlines back in maybe the early 2000s i think it was somebody correct me if i'm wrong but i just thought that paint scheme's always been so cool i've never actually seen one in real life because i don't get up to new england i've been up there when i was much younger when i was in the navy but um just think it's such a great looking paint scheme and because we model CSX hey you know hey what's to say every now and again we're not we're not running stuff up in the in the uh, in the northeast corridor where you'll probably still see some of these Pan Am uh, units uh, you know until they eventually get repainted but hey um, my brother's got dinner cooking I'm going to uh, get some grub and then I'm gonna get to working on the layout, do some scenery. I bought some scenery items uh, at uh, my local hobby shop down in Columbus, and I'm gonna do a little bit of work uh, on the layout while I'm up here, while we have this guy running in the background. I really appreciate everybody stopping in and visiting with us. Uh, thanks again for joining us here at the layout. Um, see you again soon at the Lake Erie and Midwestern. Everybody take care and happy railroading.